Um, I guess we are officially into the next speaker's time. So uh, Gabrielle, um, Gabrielle Bozzola is from the University of Arizona. Gabrielle, would you like to tell us about Quibit? Yeah, I'm very happy to be here to tell you about Quibit. Quibit is a Python package for post-processing simulations performed with the Einstein toolkit. And first, I'd like to acknowledge the funding agencies that are supporting me, in particular the uh, Texas Advanced Center for Computing. I'm Gabriel. I'm a grad student at the uh, University of Arizona. And I want to start by uh, reminding you something that probably you've seen in this uh, presentation or in this uh, workshop already. Running a simulation is not the same as doing science. Here, I have a very simplified workflow of what might be doing science. And as you see, simulation is just a part of it. Uh, Doing science start with a scientific question, which may be, I don't know, what's the energy lost by gravitational waves in a binary black hole merger? And this might lead to our parameter file or some, some form of code. Then we run simulations, and the simulations will produce output. Most often, this output is not what we're looking for. We don't have the answer. We don't know what's the energy lost by gravitational waves if we just look at the output. We need to process the output further. We need to understand what's the answer to our question by Additionally, looking through the output and combining different pieces of the output so that we can extract our science. And so I, I can I, I see doing science as this uh, workflow in which we have simulation and analysis. And the answer took it takes care of this first step simulation. Indeed, I claim the answer took it makes this step easy. And I'll define easy in a second. But just to present Quibit, what I what I claim is Quibit takes care of the second step in the same way. So Quibit makes analysis easy. So let me define what I mean with uh, making something easy uh, by starting looking at uh, Einstein toolkit. When you use the Einstein toolkit, there's a lot of stuff that you don't have to worry about. All the infrastructure is, is taken care for you. You don't have to worry about infrastructure. You don't have to worry about uh, parallelization, memory management, checkpoints, if we started from checkpoints, getting codes from maybe different uh, source version systems, uh, compiling these codes, compiling external libraries, patching external libraries, and having the correct versions. You don't have to worry about output in HDFI files. All this stuff is, is there for you. This is huge. In the sense, I think Einstein took it makes running simulation easy because all this stuff is there for you. You can focus on your science because you don't have to worry about all this infrastructure. All the low-level details are taken care of for you. Plus, Einstein took it also implements a lot of science, which is great, so that you can directly look at your scientific question. The problem, however, is that the Einstein took it doesn't immediately give you an answer very often. For example, again, in the case of uh, the energy lost by gravitational waves in our binary black hole merger, if you just run a simulation, you don't have this number. You have to do more. You have to do more work. And however, the output of the answer to it is not really friendly, I'd say. Uh, often what you have is you have a lot of directories. You have one for simulation restart. And you have a lot of different files inside these directories. You have ASCII files for reductions and scalars. You have ASCII files and HDFI files for grade functions. And you might have also different kinds of ASCII files. For example, if it's a two degree function or a three degree function, so you have a collection, these files might contain metadata or may contain headers. And you also have files for horizons and you have files for waves. This might be ASCII, this might be HDFI files. And other thorns might have their own files. For example, the alpha thorns. Uh, has Husky or HDF files uh, output, or the volume integral forms have their own ASCII files. So there's a zoo of different files and file formats and conventions that you have to worry about. There's a lot of overhead that you need to worry about when you just want to look inside the data. Uh, and this is, is a problem because there's a lot of friction between running a simulation that looking at the, the science inside a simulation. And the additional problem here is that actually, if you change parameter file, all this stuff can change. For example, some you can change, you can have uh, one grid function per file, or you can have multiple grid functions per file. You can decide what variables you want to output, maybe change halfway through a simulation, change between different simulations. So there's a lot of, uh, again, friction between uh, running a simulation and looking inside a simulation, because also having standard tools is, is not possible. It's not easy because again, different simulations have different kind of uh, files and performance. So enter Quibit. Quibit takes care of all this infrastructure. 
you don't have to worry about reading files or parsing files or understanding where the simulations results are or gluing together uh, the simulations results or cleaning up the stuff or visualizing stuff. It's all taken care for you. So you can focus on science uh, with Quibit. Again, I maintain makes running analysis easy because all the low level details are, 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 are taken care for you. You don't even have to know what's an HDFI file to use Quibit and to start doing science with it. Also, quite importantly, Quibit implements some science. So for example, a lot of stuff with uh, gravitational waves. So if you want to answer the question, what's the energy lost by gravitational waves in a binary black hole merger? That's something that you can do very easily with Quibit. And it also Quibit provides you with intuitive uh, interfaces that are close to what we think as physicists. For example, something very simple might be a time series. As a physicist, a time series is a function uh, of time. Uh, so it's as a function that takes a uh, time and gives me a value, can be real or complex. But normally what I would do uh, without any other uh, framework, I would read this as an array. I don't have to keep track of the time array. I will have to keep track of the value array. And if I want to sum two time series, I will have to check. There's a lot of um, overhead. I, again, if I want to work with primitive types, uh, whereas it's much, much better to have intuitive abstract interfaces that close, that are close to what we think as physicists. So again, what Quibit does in the sense spirit as Einstein took it, it makes running analysis easy by taking care of all the infrastructure so that you can focus on the science. So let's go into a little bit more detail what I've mean with this. So as was mentioned in the previous talk, our first order Quibit is a, Quibit is a re implementation of Wolfgang Kastner's post cactus. Uh, the design is very similar in many ways. So some of the uh, function names and structure names are actually the same. Uh, many places, the algorithms are the same, but there's also a lot of differences. Um, here, there's a, there's a list of supported features, and there's also a full list of supported features in the link here at the bottom. But just to give you a sense of what you can do with Quibit, you can work with grade data, one, two, three, the grade data as key HD5 files. Uh, you can work with time series, frequency series, you can work with horizons, you can work with gravitational waves, you can work with uh, detectors and their sensitivity curves, unit conversion, doing visualization. And there are some utilities for writing common line scripts uh, as I'll show you in a second. However, I think the most important feature is not reported here. I think the most important feature in Quibit is its documentation. Quibit has, in my opinion, excellent documentation. There's four forms of documentation in Quibit, at least. One is usage pages. So Quibit has uh, several modules. Each of these modules has uh, a page that describes how this module fits in this entire ecosystem, how it's in intended to be used, and what's its design overall. So to get a sense of how, uh, how to use a module. Then we have tutorials, which are specific, target specific features, and walk you through how to use those features, maybe go into uh, low level details so that you can understand also under the hood how things are implemented so that you can go beyond what already Quibit can, can do. Then every single function in Quibit is uh, documented. So you can you can find the documentation for the function that you want to use, find, find what it's supposed to be doing, find what kind of data it's expecting. So what type, what kind of return values it's producing. Uh, and so that you can more easily write your own scripts. And finally, I think the most important uh, piece of documentation is examples. Qubit has already a lot of examples. And, and the reason I think examples are great is, well, for once, they are a good example of uh, using Qubit as it's intended to be used. But second, examples can immediately be used for science. Indeed, let me give you some examples of these examples. Say that you ran the gallery simulation for binary black holes and you want to plot the trajectories. If you use Quibit, you don't have to do anything. You can just use the example plot horizon trajectories. Or if you want to plot any time series in your data, you can just use a plot time series. So if you want to plot the maximum, the minimum, the order two, if you want to plot a scalar, you can just call this. Or if you want to compute the gravitational wave strain, or if you want to make a 2D uh, video of a grid variable, there's already a lot of examples for common tasks that happen when, when in uh, numerical relativity. And the spirit of these examples is, uh, is like, it's here in the sense that these examples are highly 
configurable via a command line. These are all scripts that you can run uh, via a command line and have a lot of options. So you can get a quick result of what you want to look at uh, just by calling a script. You don't have to open any text editor or anything. You just call these scripts and have a sense of what's going on in your simulation. So for example here, I'm showing you again the example of uh, plotting a 2D uh, video of, uh, the, of a grid function. So this is the resolution. Uh, so I, I provide the resolution, the plane, the variable. I want to add the color map, color bar. This is where my simulation lives. Uh, I want to do bicubic interpolation. I want, uh, I want log scale within these boundaries. I want parallel rendering. So each CPU renders a different frame. I want the frames to be saved in this movie, and this is the region that I want to render. And I think the spirit of having highly configurable and command line examples promotes one, reproducibility, and two, code reuse reproducibility is because if you run the same script, you'll get the same result. And you can uh, chain multiple of these scripts to have a full analysis of your, of your simulation. Second, code reuse, because if you write uh, scripts like this, uh, well, you can use them for different simulations. But most importantly, if I write scripts like this, I can share them and everyone can benefit for of what I'm doing. So all the scripts are scripts that I wrote for myself, but because of Quibit, because of the framework that is completely transparent compared to uh, respect to directory structure, content of the simulation, uh, you can immediately run these examples. So there's a lot of saving in terms of, uh, of, of, of code. You don't have to write as much code. You can immediately do stuff. So since examples have a lot of options, if you uh, install them correctly, you can also get top completion, which I think it's, it's very handy. So here you can see like, like all these like, uh, options. Uh, so again, this is just to promote examples as a very quick way to get things done, to visualize things. You don't have to even call Quibit. You can just use these examples to, 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 to get some results. Okay. Uh, now what I want to do is, I'm halfway through my talk. What I want to do is I want to give you a very quick tour of Quibit as a Python library. So this is a library as we were seeing in previous talk that you called in your uh, Jupyter notebooks or in your scripts. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go through several features, but very quickly. The spirit is as these uh, op on op off buses in cities that tours around the, the city without showing you anything in details, but then you're exposed to what's in the city. You know, the Coliseum is there, the uh, Tour Eiffel is the other way. Um, and if you're interested, you can go back there. So this will be the spirit of the second half of this presentation. I will show you many features, you probably won't be able to understand the details, but you can refer to the documentation to understand much more about that. So let's start by essentially redoing the same example that Bruno did in the previous, uh, previous talk, or kinda. So say that you want to plot the contour, uh, contours of a quantity that you didn't compute in your simulation. So for example, here I'm considering the ratio of B squared over P, which is the ratio of magnetic pressure over gas pressure. And you want this at z equal to. And what you have is your simulation and you have 3D grid data. So what you, what you do is you import Quibit and you import a SIMDIR, which is the main point of entry in Quibit, and you import the, the visualized Matplotlib module. Uh, once again, oops. So we, we call, uh, we in, initially, uh, um, we get this uh, object SIMDIR simulation where simulation is the directory. And we're interested in the grid function attribute, which is, the one that stores all the grid functions. In particular, we're interested in the 3D grid function, so that's why it's X, Y, Z. Here, we read the uh, P and B, uh, iteration zero. And these two lines actually hide a lot of complexity. Qubit had to go through all the directories, find all the files, read the metadata, find, understand what variables are available, understand what the uh, iterations uh, are, uh, if there are HDF files, again, read the metadata of the HDF files to understand the gosons, combine this, because these are three, 3D, so combined uh, all these uh, uh, objects in a uh, meaningful way. So there's a lot of complexity here that you don't have to worry about. And same with the next line, this uh, computing this ratio, B squared over P. Here is an example of what I meant with uh, intuitive interface. Here, it's very clear to me as a physicist what I'm doing. I'm taking B squared over P, but I don't have to worry about all the details about taking care of uh, 
uh, checking that the grids are compatible uh, and all, all this stuff. It's, it's just there. We can do it. It's all done by Qubit. And this object is, is a rich object. It can do a lot of stuff. For example, what I can do is I, I can find what's the maximum up, uh, the absolute maximum on the grid, and I can find where it is, which I think it's a quite common uh, task to do, uh, asking where the, where is the maximum of the density? And you can do this uh, quite easily. Next, what we do is we slice the 3 degree data on uh, z equal to. So we said we keep x and y, and we set z equal to. And we plot the uh, we plot contours of this uh, quantity. So we have uh, this uh, from minus 30 minus 30 to plus 30 plus 30 with resolution 500 500. And we want a color map. And that's it. So the uh, just to uh, if you want to re if you want to change this example to plot the initial data with Lorin, what you can do is simply change here with a row or uh, read x, y data, change here with a row, and, and that's it. You can skip these lines and you can immediately plot the contour. You don't have to go through the uh, uniform grid stuff. It's, it's already there. Next example is I want to take the Fourier transform of, uh, of a quantity, say the maximum of the density. Again, it's quite similar. We have a simder that is, again, is taking care of all the details about reading the data, cleaning the data, merging uh, restarts. We're interested in time series. And we want the maximum in this case. And the variable that we're interested in is rho. Next, we want to take the Fourier transform. And this is what this two frequency series is doing. Rho FFT is the Fourier transform. And again, this is another example of, uh, in my opinion, intuitive object. As a physicist, this is exactly what I want to do. I, will, I want to take the Fourier transform, and I want to take the absolute value, and I want to plot. I don't have to deal with uh, frequencies. I don't have to understand if it's complex or real. Uh, it's there. It's it's much closer to, to to what I think as a physicist. And finally, something which I find quite useful is uh, these objects are, in, in my opinion, a time series is a function that takes a, a time and returns a value. So I would like to be able to call this row as a function in Python. And this is exactly what I can do. And this is what I'm showing here. This row parenthesis three means that I am asking what's the value of row at the time three. And if three is available as a time, it will be returned. Otherwise, it will be interpolated with a spline. Uh, yet another example, I want to work with horizons. Oh, uh, I want to work with uh, horizons, uh, the horizon number one. And I'm asking, what's the coordinate velocity along the x-axis? The script is always the same. We have the sim there, where we focus on our directory. This time, we were interested in horizons. We get the horizon number one. And we read the data from uh, the apparent horizon finder uh, thorn. So this is this uh, dot ah, not the quasi local thorn. And the data that we're interested in is the centroid, the location of the x centroid. Uh, this is the time series. Being a time series, I can take a derivative. So I can do this differentiated, which returns uh, velocity. Uh, the, the derivative of the position is the velocity, and I can plot this. By the way, this is just multiple leap plot function. So and everything that you know about multiple leap, you can apply it here immediately. Uh, now, working with strains, uh, this is something that we do quite, quite often. We want to compute gravitational wave uh, strains. Uh, so again, we have our SIMDIR simulation. We are working with this data in the simulation directory. We are working with gravitational waves, and we focus on the extraction radius, in this case, 100. And now I want to compute the strain, the 2 2 mode of the strain. And there's a function for that case get strain lm. And the arguments here are 2 2 because I'm in the 2 2 mode. And then this operation is done with a fixed frequency integration method, which requires a fixed frequency, so a, a, a cutoff frequency. I personally prefer to work with a period as opposed to frequency. So there's a p cut instead of f cut. But of course, if you have one, you can flip and get the other. So that's the parameter uh, p cut. And then often, uh, depending on your simulation, we need to take, uh, uh, since, since this operation involves Fourier transform, we might have to take windows. We have to, to avoid spectral leakage and aliasing. So, so you can do this immediately. And uh, there's already a lot of windows implemented. So in this case, I'm using a two key window with parameter 0.1. A two key window is just uh, essentially a boxy equals i. And, and here I, I can save this as a, 
as a as theta, and this will be a a file with three columns time a real and imaginary parts. But this was uh, the two two mode. What if we want something more realistic? What if we want to work with uh, want to match data as observed by LIGO? Well, we can do that. Qubit knows about the detectors uh, that we have available. Knows about uh, the LIGO detectors and the Virgo detector in the sense that it knows where they are on Earth and knows their geometry. So we can get the observed strain in the sense that if we have a location in the sky, say this is GW150914, we have a location in the sky, uh, and we have a simulation that it's targeting that specific simulation, we can get up to the noise. There's no noise in here. We can get the signal that would have been observed by, in this case, Virgo. Uh, and this, what's, what's going on is, again, a fixed frequency integration where summing up the uh, spin with spin weight of spherical marks, we we are finding what's the correct spherical angle respect to the location of the detector. And, and you're, we're saving the data as a file so that you can compare with your uh, field simulation of your LIGO data. And as a final example, just to go a little bit more deeper in, in Quibit, uh, as all the previous examples were essentially calling one single function. Uh, but also the internals in Quibit are well documented. So you should be able to do things that are much more complicated. For example, here I'm plotting a 3D contraplot of, a, of, a, of the density using the directly interpolating onto a uniform grid with resolution 300, 300, 300 in a, uh, in a extent of minus 100, minus 100, minus 100, 200, 100, 100. And as you see, these are probably obscure at the moment, uh, but I want to show you that you can go deeper and you can unpack all these abstractions to look at the data and work with the data directly if you need to. And uh, all of this is documented so that you can understand what's going on. So for example, this contour 3D function uh, takes the coordinates and it takes in a specific shape. So that's what this SM shape and takes the data. So we need to work directly with the data. And well, so you can work with more uh, complicated uh, programs that are not what Qubit was initially designed to, as long as you peel one layer and start working with uh, more internals. And for example, you can get something like this. So now I want to give you my, my suggestion on how you should get started with, with Qubit. My, my personal suggestion is, well, take one of your simulation, say run your uh, gallery example, Install Quibit, which is just pip install Quibit. Install the examples, which are, which are here. And again, I think the examples are really one of the critical aspects in Quibit. And what you can do is you can immediately use the examples to make some plots. Do that, find the plots that you like, make, make some of those, and then try to reproduce those plots by yourself. In the sense that use the documentation, use the tutorials, and try to uh, answer the same question. For example, try to make the plot of the trajectory of the black holes. And then you have the example as a solved problem that you can refer to to find what's the probably best way to solve that problem. Or not necessarily the best way, the example try to be general, but uh, a good way to solve the problem. And in this, if you have problems, you can uh, report them on GitHub or you can reach me via email or on this Telegram group that I will say uh, more in a second. Uh, I also want to, to, to stress that I think Quibit is a really good framework to share codes, exactly because uh, uh, Qubit takes care of all these low-level interface. People can share their analysis and other people can use them because all the low-level details are taken care of for you. And so it's very easy to reuse the code. So I encourage people to contribute back to Qubit, at least in form of examples. If you think your code is useful for other people, we can work together to get it into Qubit so that our people can, can, uh, can use your example. And I think, again, this is a, is a, the same parallelism with the Einstein toolkit, which useful codes can be shared and other people can really benefit from them. And I also think Quibit being completely openly developed, accessible, augmented, and hopefully easy to extend is a very good opportunity to learn more about the software engineering aspects of uh, producing software uh, as opposed to just doing physics. And you can see more about uh, developing Quibit in, in this link here. So uh, to wrap up, uh, Qubit is a, is, a, is a Python package for process processing simulations, so to, to do science. And it's published 
in the minutes. journal of open source software. So if you use it, please uh, consider citing it. Then uh, there's a Telegram user group where people can chat among each other and chat with me, ask questions. And I, I typically use this group to make announcement about development of Qubit in the sense that when I add new feature, I, I, I say it there. Uh, but of course, uh, you can also reach me uh, via email. And finally, what does this word mean, Qubit? Well, Qubit is this uh, stick here that you see in the picture. It, that is a, it, it's a tool traditionally used by the Tohono people here in Arizona uh, in the harvest season for the saguaro cacti. This is a saguaro cactus. And these are, this is the fruit of the saguaro cactus. And this Qubit is used to pluck this fruit. So my, my, my slogan, my motto for Qubit is uh, harvest the fruit of your cactus simulation with Qubit. And with this, I am going to take question. And thanks again, uh, Wolfgang, NumPy, SciPy, HPyPy, and the funding agencies to make this possible, that made this possible. Thank you. I, I really like your slogan. Um, <laughs> that's really, that's, that's pretty clever. Uh, do we have questions? Uh, somebody has raised their hand. Um, if you would, if you want to just speak, please go ahead. Hello, can you hear my voice? Yes. Okay, uh, thank you for your talk. Uh, I just have a question. Um, for example, I have this uh, data from the uh, G that, um, that the first detection of gravitational waves, uh, which was uh, with, uh, colliding, uh, uh, merging two black holes. And I want to just simulate that uh, merger. And do I need to run uh, all the simulation or if I have those uh, pre uh, specific files, I can use Qubit and just run the simulation and get uh, those uh, pictures and graphs. Is that possible to do that? So if you, if you have the full simulation with all the data, then you can immediately use Qubit and you don't have to run anything else uh, to get uh, plots or videos. But if you have only part of the simulation, or if you have only the parameter file, you don't have the output, or some of the output is cannot be computed, then you'll have to rerun the simulation. Okay, thank you. So I saw you have uh, now also something to make movies. So I'm, I'm curious, is that uh, similar to this uh, sim video or more low level? So you can plot uh, one grid variable at a time. So it's a, it's a completely different, uh, so it's a completely different package that has nothing to do with, uh, with Qubit. And it's, uh, but the, the, the idea is similar that you can plug in uh, like scripts. So, it's a, like this is a is an example of a script to plot to plot a grid grid uh, grid variable, but you can you can have anything that you want. This mopi is just a structure to to take care of rendering all this stuff. So like this, I don't know, parallelization or uh, stuff like that. So grid var would be uh, provided by your framework and Mopi is the thing that makes the movie that's a different package. Exactly, yes. Okay, thanks. Um, we had a question in the chat. <clears throat> Can you explain the parameter of p-cut, how to, how to calculate it from Lorene output? One minute. Se seems unit conversions, uh, sometimes unit versions can um, bother me is what, what the chat says. Okay, yeah, so this p-cut is, uh, let me see where was the p-cut. Um, P cut or F cut as a, the parameter that enters this method that we use to compute strain from CIFOR called fixed frequency integration. It's essentially a cutoff frequency that says uh, above this frequency or below this uh, period, or probably flip, I have to think about it. Signals seconds. are, are we, we don't care about those signals because they're unphysical. For example, let's think about a binary black hole merger. Uh, the lowest frequency is the, the frequency of, of the first orbit. We won't have any physical frequency. Uh, below that because we, we didn't simulate that. So this is what PCAT represents. It essentially is a way to remove some noise. So the way I personally compute uh, PCAT is again, trying to find a physical frequency in a simulation. 
In the case of uh, binary neutral star simulation, uh, that will be essentially, again, uh, related to the first orbital period, uh, twice the orbital period, and play around with that and, and see around with that. For unit conversion, this is using uh, cactus geometrized units. Uh, so it's completely up to you. Uh, so probably this will be in uh, G equals C equal M uh, sign equal one. Uh, but this was, a, so this is a case for a binary black hole. And in this case, it's completely up to me what's the meaning of the, of, of, of the units. Uh, 